it's uneven. It's, it's, it's not loaded. What will happen is it'll, it'll load. You're going to load here and skip, load here and skip. So now you got, say, three spots and the other three are empty. So you'll get that jumping effect and it's bouncing off the wall. Um, don't let it dry out too much when you're getting near the end. And one other thing I've noticed with people, when I watch people who, who say they can paint, I had a neighbor in one of my other houses and he said, uh, I'd like to hire but I'm too cheap. I said, okay, you will paint your own. So he's painting his outside of his house. And I go home one day from a job and he's painting his spindles. So I stood there and I watched him. <clears throat> he said, Wayne, how am I doing? I said, how much paint have you used? He said, well, just about a gallon. I said, well, you got, you got 22 spindles and you used a gallon. <laughs> well, how, long, how much did you do? I said, I can do those spindles in the court. What am I doing wrong? He's, he's painting. So Doug, you're taking it off, putting it on, and he keeps in it more and more and more. So, the, so eventually he was like, he had probably more on there. If you were measuring in ounces, say so you're supposed to have four ounces, he probably had 16. That's the mistake I always see people who paint on their own. They put too much on, or they don't put enough on, but they keep trying to take it off. You just, when you paint like that, it's like when I did the side of this, right? That's enough, because I'm going to go back for a second coat. You don't need to put, I don't need to start here and just get gobs and gobs. Okay, that's enough. Yeah, get more, get more. No, I can take that and run it down there. And then when I come back for the second coat, I'm going to get it. It's like I have my oldest boy work with me. And he, he, uh, he does all the trim for me. So I said, okay, just think of it this way. Let's say you're putting on, for the sake of the number, three ounces. Put an ounce and a half on now, and the other half on later. Not all three at once. Because what you'll do is you'll get gumming. You'll put a gob on here, and you'll stop, and you put another gob, and then, but if you don't brush it out, now you get too much paint there. So loading the, loading the roller is, that's an important thing, and I think it's a good question, Ready you brought it up, because I just kind of assume that everybody knows what we mean by loading it, but that's the key to it. And then uh, don't go to the dollar store and buy a roller. Don't go to Home Depot and buy a. Uh, I, I haven't converted to metric yet, but don't buy a thin little dinky roller that's no thicker than a toothbrush. Buy a decent size. This is this is the one I normally use. I think this is a 15 mil. Um, I use a 20 for a stucco ceiling. So what does that mean when you say mil? Is that the thickness, it's of, the thickness the of the pile. Okay. Yeah, so you can, I get, I could take the smaller ones and then they're very fine. People say, you know, I, I see people in the store and I'm buying my paint and they'll buy these trays with the rollers in it and the plastic and that. And the pile is about, like most of us have more of a stall right now than some of these piles. They're no good. You're just, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your dollar ninety-eight on your roller and you're getting frustrated. And then the thing is, if a guy is frustrated because the honeydew list says Saturday you've got to paint the living room, now he's pissed off, that's the right word. Because he's trying to roll up and he rolls down. Oh, let's try this again. Wow. Something wrong with this paint. And that's all you're doing. You're only get, you, can't, you can't get enough coverage. Wayne? Yeah, when do you clean them? When do I clean them? Well, you have a kitchen. I look at a kitchen and it depends on... Sometimes I'll run my hands over the walls, especially around the stove. It gives me an indication how good the cook is. Now your wife's a great cook and I've never criticized her walls. But sometimes people get a lot of grease on the walls and they never clean them. So then you know you're going to end up washing those walls. But I very rarely wash any walls in the years that I've been painting. Um, I've had to prime some ceilings that were older homes. Um, there's a couple of homes across from the Oshawa Center have the old swirl ceiling. My dad used to do that for a living. And first thing I'll, I'll ask them is, is anybody in the house paint or a smoke? I said, oh yeah. So I remember going to this one job and, I, and I, I touched the ceiling and the ceiling was the color of this table. So I called the lady in. I said, did you think your ceilings were fairly clean? She goes, yeah, I really didn't think. I said, I thought you were just trying to get more money out of me. 
So I said, well, no, watch this. So I give her a little touch. She goes, oh my God, we gotta quit smoking. I had to do it, I had to prime it. That's how bad it was. Because people don't realize when you smoke, how much yellow is it. And I've done some other homes in North Oshawa where we end up, we had to wash the, the trim because the, uh, the, uh, and the trim was so yellow that there was no way the paint was ever going to stay there. So that's a good, that's a good question. And so when would you prime? Um, and then in terms of priming, would you use those all-in-one paints that are out there now that do both priming and painting? Like, are they any good? No. The, the place where I used to buy my paint, and I asked her, the lady there, she said, no, it's just a good, it's a good marketing scheme. Because really what it is is, how does the paint know which one is paint and which one is primer? Are you the primer? Oh no, I'm the primer. I, that's my opinion. Yeah. I think it's a lot of money for for no reason. You can't you can't tell me that you can mix two and get get a primer and a paint. Ron? I tell the paint which is which. Oh, you this tell the primer? No, you're first go. Sorry. Sorry, I'm coming back there. John? Question with regard to questions actually. You can put oil over latex, but you can't put latex over oil. Now, having said that, I'm contradicting myself. You can put latex over oil, but again, you have to prime it. You have to prime it, and it'll get a really flat finish on it. And uh, sometimes you'll you'll see I've been in houses where you see the person who painted before, and you can take your nail and run it along the trim, and you, you think. So you ask the customers to. Without being rude, who painted this before? Well, my husband. I said, do you remember what kind of paint he used? She said, well, I remember the first time he moved in and he used oil. He hated the smell and the cleanup. So I said, what did he do the second time? She goes, oh, he found a nice paint that you can wash off with and it's latex. Well, the second you go like that on latex over oil, it's coming off. And people wonder why their door, door jams and their door casings are all chipped because they say, oh, it must be the cheap paint is no good. It's, they've got oil, latex over oil. For any surface, yeah, I use a 20 mil for a stucco. Now, if I'm doing a flat set, right I would use a 15 mil. When I did this, I used 15 mil all the way because this is a flat surface. When I did the ceiling in here, I can use a 15 mil, and I can do the same thing here. Now, these were these were a challenge to do because this is a it's really hard to get in there with the with the roller. So what I end up having to do is I had to go brush every little crack. And then roll it, and then roll it twice. But it does brick. Once you now, once this, now that this is done, when we come to do it again, I'll, I won't have to worry about this unless we go to a really drastic color. But it's got some base on it now. So, Dave, if you have to wash. Yeah, that's, that's the best because it gets a lot of the grease off and it doesn't leave any film So because you don't want any film. And the thing is, check if you're washing a wall with TSP and you get it and it's greasy, once it's dry, rub your hand over it. It feels, it feels really flat and, I don't want to say coarse, but it's not slippery. You know that's basically you got a good primer there because now it's taking all the grease off it. So. Now people ask about cleaning rollers. Yes. Yeah. What about a wood stove? You can't paint wood stoves. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I love the wood stoves. Oh, there's another nightmare. Yes. Yeah. Then you, what I would do with that, and I, the reason I know that, because I had it my second house in the south end, the people who had it before me decided that the Spanish look was in. We I mean, all seen the Spanish look. Burn board to here, stuck over there, and stuck on the ceilings. And honest to God, I had stuck on the ceilings like that. So what I did is I just covered the whole room, went out and got the hole out of the, the shed, and I told her, I mean, I'm sorry, I took the hole and I scraped it all the way down, and got it down to 
what was about a, a reasonable size for a 20 mil. And then to answer your question, I had to prime that spot. And I used what they call uh, KILZ, K-I-L-Z. It's, it's an oil-based primer, and it, it's great for stuff like that. Because what it does, if you use a normal primer on that spot, John, what you're talking about, as soon as the second coat dries, you're going to go back and see a, a yellow spot. It's going to bleed back through. What the kills does, it seals it, primes it, and it seals it, and it won't, you won't see it come back through because a lot of times the people have said the same thing. They've done it with the primer analysis, and they said, well, i got this yellow mark on it. And that's, and that's what I had in my house the same year time. I had this black around the ceiling. It was just, but I had one of those zero clearance fireplaces, so I got rid of it, but that's a good question, John. Yeah, thanks. Because that's something people don't know. You know, you're just going to say, oh, "I'll just put a lot of paint on there or a primer." You got to use the proper primer to get rid of that stain. They use kills in a lot of fire restoration. All the companies who um, who come in and do all the the restoration, if they have any spots that they they need to uh, to get, they're going to paint. They use kills. Someone would spray it on. I've only ever sprayed once, and I swore I never spray again. Court. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's the same thing. It keeps it keeps the the shellac. You can use shellac, but the kills will not won't allow the the knot to bleed through again. Wayne. Please tell me you take the light plates off. Always take the light plates off. <laughs> I have done that for forty years. <laughs> and I I know I got a lot of stories, but I'll tell you one. I said to the lady, she said, "What what?" This one particular customer said, "What do you uh, what do I need to do to be ready when you come in and paint?" I said, okay, we're doing your living room, dining room. I said, okay, why don't you take all the pictures off the walls? She looked at me and she said, take all the pictures off the walls? Why would you want to do that? And, uh, I know the couple, and I was good friends with her. Her husband says, he says to her, and this is his exact words, you stupid bitch, he said, you think when you come home tomorrow and you got 27 little squares all around the house, why would you not take the pictures off? Oh. So I said, you got to take all the plate covers off, switches, plugs, everything. Well, that's not that hard to do. Okay, I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. It's not that